And so then I kind of just lost it. I started um, numbing the pain with drugs. Um, got addicted to cocaine pretty heavily. How much would you spend per day on this? Like $140. $140 a day? Yeah. Wow. I couldn't stop. I'm going through jewel pods like it's going out of style. <laughs> yeah. You should be sponsored at this point. I know. <laughs> I love them. Yeah. They love you too. Yeah, they do. <laughs>
I see. And so what started as like maybe once a month kind of thing became once a week kind of thing became every day kind of thing. Every day. Okay. How much would you spend per day on this? Like $140. $140 a day? Yeah. Wow. I couldn't stop. But so so you would buy this like at the beginning of the week pretty much every day? He would come at your door and boom. I mean, you would meet him somehow and Yeah. I see. And so, and sorry uh, for my ignorance on that, like $140 worth of cocaine. Is that like w just a one, one like a gram. couple shot? One gram. And so how, how many times would you consume the drug over the course of the day? I would try to make it last more than a day. Mm -hmm. okay. But when it was at its worst, I was doing more than a gram a day. And so you're pretty much at this point in a constant... Constant. Constant, I see. Yeah, it's, okay. it's like I would go until my body couldn't physically go anymore and like I would do a line and I would still feel tired and just... Go back at it. I would fall asleep for like 16 hours and then wake up, maybe take a day off and then the cravings would return and I would have to buy again. Okay, okay. So this situation has put you into a slight financial struggle from being completely debt free. You see, guys, um, and we'll be discussing about this together, but, you know, life is not just a, a simple cruise. You know, you were at the time in a very good spot, debt free, and know that uh, you're not the only one that has been impacted by the pandemic. Uh, if you've been following some of our other uh, videos, we have actually found a lot of people in your situation at the pandemic hit and boom, just a twist. So, um, so you're not alone on this front. How much in total would you say this cost you? I think I did the math for just about one year of use. And I looked at my bank statements and just the ATM withdrawals were about $14,000. $14,000. How did you afford that at the time? Well, at the time, I was paying off my credit card every month and so I just started making the minimum payments and using all of my cash flow and then putting everything on my credit card that I, I could and I using see. all of my cash and I was able to do that for a while before it became dire of course yeah, you can't I mean $140 yeah. per day I mean that can very quickly put you into a tough spot so at the time you were still working though right mm-hmm Oh, so you were able to still manage that addiction with uh, working? Mm -hmm. What were you doing? Digital marketing. Digital marketing. I okay. was doing all of my jobs. And if I may ask, I'm just very curious, like what was the click that was like, that's it, this addiction? Because today you're proud to say that you're no longer addicted, right? I mean, I think I'm still, I'm addicted to it, but I'm not using. I'm in, I see. Yeah, I'm in recovery. That's awesome. Okay, yeah. congratulations. So Thank what you. was very much the, the click that was like, you know, from... More than a gram a day to today zero. What, what was the twist of events? It became obvious to me that I wouldn't be able to sustain it and I wasn't able to pay rent. I was running out of money and spending my rent money and lying to my parents and saying, can I borrow 50 bucks? I was sobbing like in withdrawals and I still called him. I still picked up. I, I was just miserable. I didn't want to do it anymore, but I couldn't stop and I couldn't figure out how to do it. And it just became overwhelming. And so I came clean to my parents and decided to go to detox, nice. not full rehab, because then okay. I would lose my job. I see. Because you, your job had no idea about it. They still don't. Okay. That's yeah. <laughs> um, but so... What actually sparked it is I met Benny, um, who is my pug. Okay, awesome. There you and go, new partner, yeah. I had met so many dogs that I was trying to adopt, and none of them felt right, and they didn't, they didn't feel like Toby was my world. So when I lost him, I didn't think I ever could find another dog mm -hmm. that meant anything to me that I could love. And when I met Benny, I was like, this is what I need. And so I had him for about two weeks and was able to get into a detox program. And he just stayed with my friends while I uh, got clean. Yeah. yeah. Nice. 
you know, during the pandemic, I was also feeling quite lonely. I mean, I was studying at the time on the East Coast. You know, nothing was, I was being quite cautious about the COVID situation and I felt lonely and I was like, wow, you know, I've always dreamed about a dog. And I did the same as you. I yeah. got a little, uh, his name is Pogo and uh, that's why you see the reference here sometimes. But uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's just a ball of love. I mean, if you had pets, You've gone through the joys of everything that they bring you on a daily basis uh, to as well some of the tough times. Um, yeah. Thank you for walking me through that. We are at its core a finance channel. And so now let's go and link it all together towards your financial situation. Okay. Okay. So let's look first at our n first category, which is income and assets. So we have three uh, streams of incomes, as you described earlier. You're working as a digital marketing. How much do you make for digital marketing per month, would you say? Um, about 4000 Okay, 4000 Very nice. That's uh, post-tax, right? Yes. Okay. That's good. And also as a videographer? 7000 a year. Okay, $7,000 a year. Okay, what does that consist of? What do you do for seven grand? I work for a nonprofit that okay. goes to low-income and... Um, underprivileged schools, elementary and middle schools, and we install $100,000 fitness centers. And then um, it's all funded through private partnerships. So we do this big ribbon cutting to oh. get press and stuff. So I am the photographer and videographer. So we do all the ribbon cuttings for 12 schools in two weeks. Whoa. Yeah. 12 schools. Yeah. Okay. And you also manage a rock and roll band. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay, so you do rock and roll band. How much does that give you? Nothing. Zero. Zero. So far. Okay. So far. Okay, but, you okay. Know, you never know. Uh, so what do you do for them? You manage kind of the... Um, I do like PR. I pitch their albums to to record labels and I I have a lot of connections from when I was in a band okay. that kind of allow them to take the next step from being a local band to being a regional band to maybe being a national band. Let's go. Okay, yeah. cool. So it's pretty much an investment, a passion for you, per, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, okay, so that brings you per month net at 4,600. Yearly, you're making $80,000 per year. At 33 years old, when we compare that against the median, meaning 50% of those uh, individuals make less than that amount, 50 make more, the median for your age between 25 and 34 is $51,000, 80. You're doing pretty good. Portland is actually also much cheaper than Seattle, so good yes, job on is. this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll account for that in our future calculations. Next point. Thank you for providing us with the statements here as I look into your checking accounts. You currently have... A balance of 2,600 on one mm -hmm. and 625 on the other. So that brings you a total uh, of 3,200 pretty much. Do you have anything else? No. Nothing else. Okay. Except for part of a car, technically. A part of a car. Okay. Yeah. You know what? Let's actually speak about that car. Yeah. So um, I also see that you have a loan on it. But what do you drive? I drive a 2013 Toyota Prius V. Yes, yes. I say yes because I just love those cars. Prius for the win. I mean, look, they're not the most aesthetically pleasing, okay? <laughs> uh, you know, but uh, just just the resilience of the engine, the maintenance is so cheap and the parts availability. Those cars, they can go like 200, 250,000 miles. No problem. Yeah, a lot of them last 300,000 miles. Let's go. Actually, a couple of weeks ago, we were into a um, kind of a ride share, uh, Uber or Lyft, whatever. And uh, it was inside of a Prius. The guy almost had half a million miles on this Holy damn Prius. Crap. Second battery, though. Oh, okay. But still, I mean, come on, half a million miles, you know. That's great. Just, my just, I just love those, okay? Um, it's my second one. My other car that I had that was paid off mm. uh, was a... 2008 Toyota Prius. Oh, okay. So uh, what do you mean? You you lost it in an accident or something? Yeah, I was uh, driving home and somebody stole a car and was driving the wrong way down a one-way street and hit me. If I had been speeding, it would have hit me right here instead of At the my front. legs. So he hit me in my legs. How fast did he hit you? He was going about 30. Oh, I see. And he drove and he tried to escape he like kept driving and then the car died and then he came running over to make sure I was all right and then ah, took oh, off. Oh, thanks. Uh, okay. And they never found him. 
Oh. Okay. Well, I mean, he's an, he's an ass, okay, uh, for yeah. just doing something like this. At least, thank you for checking on you. I mean, at least a little bit of humanity in this world. Uh, holy yeah. smokes. <laughs> okay, so did you, were you able to, uh, like, get the value of the car back? It was, I had to pay a deductible. Okay, that's fair. So, um, and I got about six grand back, but I paid nine, and it was... Okay. So, so let me tell you something, guys. If you get into an accident, negotiate the value of the car that is being totaled. I tried. Yeah, uh, but you, they're going to lowball you like no tomorrow. What I do, I had a big car accident a couple of years ago. They lowball me minus 30% of what the car was worth. I found on, uh, you know, you can look at like Cargurus or any other place that they sell car. Like, for example, Carvana or, or CarMax. Those are jackpots because they oversell, they overprice their car like crazy. You find your car on those uh, that's a similar. You find the ones that's the most overpriced possible. You send three of them to your insurance and you're like, look, this is the market value for this. Mm -hmm. And you find the one that is out of this world. Huh? I mean, me, uh, you just want to show, and it's not fraud in anything. It's the value of cars that are selling mm -hmm. that are the same as you. But uh, you know the system because you follow this show, okay? All yeah. right. So next time you get into that, make sure you negotiate, okay? Uh, always stay legal, stay fair, but just make sure that you have what you're being owned. Okay, cool. So on this car, you do have a loan right now of uh, $12,000. Mm -hmm. Interest rate, 2%. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got this as a good time. I saw that you bought, a, bought it for about 15000 Is that right? About, yeah. Okay, in uh, March 2022, uh, good time, 2%. Uh, let's freaking go. I love that. Though, if I look at uh, Kelly Blue Book, the value of the car today is about 11000 so you own a little bit more than what is worth. Okay, okay. I'm saying it's fair. For now, do not touch this car. We'll be going, of course, on how you may want to pay that. But 2%, overall, I feel like you've made a good deal. So good job on this front. On this car, you're paying about 272 per month. Maintain it as much as you can and let it go till it dies. Because yes, 55 that's my plan. Miles, yeah, 55 miles per gallon, guys. It just can't get better than that. All right, that's awesome. So I'm not going to account for that uh, premium into your assets. So you pretty much have today uh, on your hands about three grand. That's very thin, uh, Corey, okay? Uh, you don't have any other emergency funds or investments account, okay? And this combined with debt, you know, you don't want to be into a tough spot, okay? Right. So let's move on to our next segment here that looks at expenses and debt. So the first expense that we like to look at, how much the heck do you pay for rent? 1300 1300 okay, not too bad. And that includes like your gas, utilities, and so on? Um, gas, water, and sewage. Uh, probably a little bit of a renter's insurance. You're renting, right? You're yeah. not owning, okay. Um, that brings your rent at 28% of your income. Guess what? We like it to be at exactly 28 or under. So you are good on that front, just... Keep going at this. Try to make sure if they come and they tell you, oh, we are raising this year your rent by X, negotiate. Negotiate, negotiate, okay? Don't just accept blindly everything that people give you. Huh? Life is about negotiation at all time, okay? At, um, at my core, I love to negotiate. So I will always try, always be very polite, of course, and, but make sure that you get good deals. So right now, 1300 good to go. Do not touch it. Well done. Second thing, car. Uh, so as we look together and I look at some of your expenses, you are spending quite a bit on insurance. Yeah. Almost $200 per month on your car insurance. Yeah. How, how can you explain that? I can't. I don't. No like DUIs, no, no tickets, nothing. Mm -mm. Okay, that's that's steep. At 33 years old, if you were 20, you know, you're just starting to drive, $200. Okay. At 33 years old, no, no, no. You need to do your research and benchmark the different insurance. Because per my estimation on your cars, you should be at around 115, 130. Now it depends on the type of coverage, but 200 is very steep, okay? My car has been broken into like once a year. Well, how, how do your car gets broken every year? Um, I live on a high crime street in Portland. $1,300 a month? Pretty much. Like my catalytic converter got stolen, it was broken into broken into one time a guy broke into it left his prescription bottle 
and a dirty needle. Oh no. His name was on the bottle and they didn't do anything. Oh no. Yeah. Come on. That pisses me. Portland. Off. Woo. Okay, well, actually, uh, you told me that you're moving soon, huh? Yeah. There is go. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, okay, so that's that's why $200. Now, it, it's no surprise. Huh? Uh, your car monthly expenses sum to about 11%. You want to be less than 15? Let's go. Good job on this. You see, you have two big poles. Number one, you're doing good on this, okay? okay. Now... There are other things that you're not doing as good, okay? Let's look together at uh, your debt. So you have, let's put it right there, $65,000 worth of debt, mm -hmm. okay? Some of it is student loans, but a lot of it is credit card, huh? I mean, uh, the first one, if we look at uh, here, it's almost $14,000, 26%. And uh, on this one, last month, you've put in 1300 but out 2600 so you're continuing to spend on this uh, yeah. korea what the <laughs> yeah. what the heck huh? i don't know i mean uh, what's nice about your statements is for the most part it's the same every day yeah. <laughs> you don't be fuck now the nature of your expenses here the biggest one is new rate way food and new rate way food is 34, 62, 33, 39, 59, every day. What is it? Nicotine. Ah, nicotine. Okay. Nicotine, like you mean cigarettes? Uh, jewel. Okay. Jewel. Okay. How much do you spend per month on jewel? About like $250. Okay. $250 a month on jewel. I mean, you're going at this pretty strong to spend that much. Like you're always smoking pretty much, right? What uh, what brought you to this? Was it like I was a cigarette smoker for ten years. Oh, and you were then okay. I wanted to quit, and so I tried the Jewel, and I was able to quit. But then I could smoke the Jewel whenever, oh. and then instead of going out and having a cigarette every couple hours, mm. I'm going through Jewel pods like it's going out of style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is a huge dip. I mean, uh, this yeah. is uh, I mean, this is a ton of your expense on this. Okay, so you also spend quite a bit on small markets like Walgreens, 33, 7-Eleven, 62, 34, right here, right there. Those convenience stores. I mean, look, I don't want to put uh, everybody on my back, okay? But please, if you can, don't do your grocery shopping at Walgreens or 7-Eleven. Okay, just in general, I'm not speaking just about you, huh? but I see so many people like they go, oh, it's the convenience and so on. The prices are so much more expensive mm -hmm. than what if you were going to, you know, grocery outlets, for example, or even like Costco. I mean, when you're a single person, like just one individual, Costco may not be the most appropriate because it's bulk. You can always freeze, huh? so no excuse. But please, 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 here you're spending, I mean, this is... What? I, I'm, I'm not going to put a number out there, but I believe it's two digit percent greater than what you could pay else. Okay. So try as much as you can to limit those little stores yeah. like this. The 7 I Eleven mean, uh, is definitely more jewels. Oh, I see. And so then the Walgreens is prescriptions. I don't ah, buy anything from. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So 7 Eleven is the, the Walgreens. Then, of course, uh, please uh, get your medicine. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to say that. Take it. Uh, okay. Uh, but 7 Eleven, Nutrit. I mean, Nutrit is uh, the rock star on New York Cross. Uh, you should be sponsored at this point. I know. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> yeah. They love you too. Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, over the course of last month as well, you spent quite a bit on restaurants. You were traveling to California or so? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my dad had an art show in California, so... He had a what? Art show. Oh, okay. Nice. Your yeah. dad is like a painter or something? Yes. Oh, well, that's good. Awesome. Um, so, yeah. So, you're spending quite a bit there. You've made quite a bit of purchases at the restaurant and so on. Priority number one when you're in credit card debt is you, you cannot allow yourself to splurge because your goal is as much as you can to not stack more credit card debt. Th this is rule number one. Do not stack more credit card debt than you have because the interest that you're paying on this is almost as bad as it gets. I mean, you have, of course, the payday loan and all those short-term loans and pounds and stuff. Those are, uh, I don't want to speak about this, but credit card is awful. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so your objective number one is please do not stack more credit card debt because you did last month with 2,600 uh, 2, out, 1,300 in. Okay. For the rest of your expenses, I mean, you are uh, spending quite a bit outside some Grubhub, a little bit here and there. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. Not uh, the best, uh, not uh, what we like. Else, you are, uh, I mean, you know, you're spending quite a bit. So I'm not going to say you're frugal because it's not the case. No. Okay. No. Uh, do you spend every, do you, I'm sorry, do you save every month or no today? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like, you? no. No, you don't. Yeah, no, that's I true. Don't. I could see that. Yeah. I, uh, okay. All right. So this one, you're making uh, minimum payments that are pretty high, but this is not only your the only credit card debt that you have. You also have another one of 5,300. That's a care credit. So tell me about this one. What is this? Well, it's meant for use for um, veterinary things or hospital things, like so doctors. So, And they give you a promotional uh, time period to pay mm -hmm. off the transaction with zero interest. Yeah. And then they get you back right here at 27%. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, so, so please, uh, th those promotions. The other day, la last time, when I'm at Pogo had a little surgery too, I have pet insurance. Please, if you, if you can, yes. please take pet insurance. No matter what, trust me. Very quickly, Pogo uh, ate a piece of plastic, $6,000 surgery. I had uh, pet insurance that cost me 60 bucks a month. I wish I had that for Toby. Yeah. Do you uh, have yeah. this for uh, Ru Benny? Benny? Yeah. Yes. Yes, cool. I do. All yeah. Right. yeah. That check. Yeah. Okay, cool. You do have that. I love this. Okay. Uh, so please, please take pet insurance. It's the, the, the bills can stack up like no tomorrow. So in your case here, you've taken the promotion, but today you're paying 27% on it. So it's almost like a credit card. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we'll be needing to tackle this ASAP because you're spending a fortune on interest. Let's look at some other types of loans that you have. You have a guitar center, $200. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, this one you're not paying uh, on interest. Let's just take care of it. You know, we'll be taking care of this, $200. You don't, I don't want you to have this on your, on your mind. Let's just, it's gonna be an easy first win, okay? We'll be speaking about this. And then you have two other type of loans that are very interesting. Those are 401k loans, mm -hmm. retirement loans. So what that means is that you've put at some point money towards your 401k, but you've decided to take a loan against it. How does it work is you're paying right now about 4.5% for one, 8.5% for another. The sum is about $10,000 combined. You're taking that money, you're paying back your account plus interest, but it goes back towards your account. So the interest comes back towards you, okay? How come you took those loans? What happened? First off, I maxed out my credit card to um, pay for Toby's uh, okay. chemotherapy. I see. So I took out loans to pay that down. Mm -hmm. And then I took another loan out to pay it, the other credit card down once I got clean. Okay, yeah. okay. So taking uh, money off your 401k loan to pay credit card. Oh, it's such a tricky question. Uh, I mean, your 401k, ladies and gentlemen, is your future. It's, it's a retirement account. As much as you can, do not take it. Now, if you were, you were in such an extreme situation that I say, okay. I say, okay, you, you, I didn't want you to start being on the street or any of that. You had a little bit of money. This is emergency, emergency. You were in that emergency situation. So I say, okay, I don't think you did bad. Okay. But right now it's, it's preventing you from um, setting yourself for your future. Mm -hmm. So you also have about $24,000 of student loans, mm -hmm. federal, 0%. Okay. Uh, thank you for that, uh, the government. Uh, zero percent is really good. You're not paying a dime on those, you know, for now. Except if you uh, if you have a great amount of money that comes in, I wouldn't pay those in the short term at zero percent. You have no interest in paying those, except if you want to be debt free. Ultimately, your total debt right now comes to sixty five thousand three hundred. Now, let me tell you something that will be very surprising to you. Analyzing all your debt. Per month right now, you're paying about $460 on interest. Holy crap. 
So 450 is today, but if you continue in that behavior, I mean, within two months, looking at your uh, behavior, you will surpass 500 easy. Every month, your decisions now are going to impact that amount. $460 on nothing, okay? This is very important for you to realize as you think about your debt, okay? So take this on the side. Now, if we look at the rest of your expenses here, I'm recording a uh, couple expense on your pet needs. How much is your uh, pet insurance? 60 bucks. 60 bucks, okay. And how much do you spend on food to survive? 200 bucks every two weeks, so 400. So 400, that's the standard, okay, $400. So that leads me to the next segment on our show, which is the money case. All right, guys, and we are back back for the money case segment here with our friend, Corey. So for the money case, uh, what we're going to analyze is one of your most expensive behavior that Lead. you're doing that refers to your consumption of Juul or e-cigarettes, right? Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned that you spend about $250 per month on this. Mm -hmm. how, how long has it been since you started that behavior on Juuls? About a year Year about a, a year, year and a half. Okay. So those uh, 240 or 50 that you spend per month over the last year and a half sum to $4,300. Mm -hmm. Now are you ready for this? You're 33 years old, okay? Mm -hmm. I want you to realize and understand the cost of your behavior. That $4,300, if today you had that money and you invested it and you forget that it exists, by the time you retire the amount of money that you would have would sum to not $10,000, not $20,000, not $40,000, but $55,100. This, Corey, is what your jewel consumption last year cost you. Fuck. So, so, so what I mean by that, this assumes that you invested that $4,000 on the side at the general returns of the S&P 500, which is about 10% a year. You just close the account. You open it at six, 60 years old, you, so 27 years of investments. On that account, you would have 55 grand. Mm -mm. So I want you to realize that such a small behavior that today you're like, oh, it's only 250 per month, has a tremendous impact for your future self. This is the recipe for wealth. It's not about making that $1 million house purchase. What people don't get is that wealth is acquired in behaviors. It's the little things that we do every day. Being smart about your money, Look, you, you, it's good that you're realizing this at 33, not at 40. Imagine the amount of money that you would have wasted. And then you come to 60 years old and like some of the people that I've spoken here with $250,000 worth of debt. I mean, it's crazy. I want you to think of yourself now at 33 on how can I best set myself for my future for myself, okay? I mean, look, it's a finance channel. Right? I'm not speaking about the health component. So together, don't worry, Corey, we'll be discussing how not to completely stop that behavior. Because I, I, it's not realistic that today I tell you, no, stop the, the jewels. You're not going to do that. But be just mindful about how can we reduce that to levels that are going to allow you to be more financially responsible and in a better financial spot, OK? The only way for you to get out of the situation that you're in is with a change of behavior. Are you ready to make that change? Mm -hmm. Okay. And we are back, back after this money case segment. Now let's look together at your recommendation, okay? This is not, f I'm not a financial advisor, so this is not financial advice. This is what I would do if I was in your position, in your age, with all of what we've spoken together, analyzing your behavior and what will work for you. It's about being realistic so that you can actually do that what, by the time you live here and you know what to do. Okay, so the way I, I structure my recommendations is first, we've identified together your needs. This is the amount of money that you need to live no matter what. If shit hits the fan, I'm saying based on analyzing your rent, your phone, gas, insurance, communication, food, all your minimum payments, 
that today to live, you need at least $3,500 per month. This is to need, huh? this is what you need bare minimum to live, okay? And that's 80% of your income. That's a lot, that's, that's a lot, Corey. We like your needs to be less than 50, okay? A lot of those expenses are related to your monthly payments. We little by little want to push that out of the way, okay? And the crazy amount of interest that you're paying. The second category is your wants. Your wants is money that you spend on non-essentials, okay? For you, it sums to a very steep amount of money because of all those nutri nutrient way and all the little expense, the DoorDash, the Grubhub, the little restaurants here and there. I am going to give you $200 a month. $200 a month. So for your wants. This means that this 250 on Jewel, I need you to reduce it to 100 I'm not saying stop it 100%, but you need to reduce it. You need to change. A little trick that I, that I do for, you know, that myself I do. You know, I, as I mentioned, I like to gamble a little bit per personally, you know? And so what I've, uh, and I'm not a gamble addict, but I lived in Vegas for five years and I had fun, I would say, okay? This is my rule. I never gamble alone. If I want to gamble, you know, maybe once a month or so, I would go with someone and, and just like, we would have fun for a night. I, I record this as an entertainment expense, not expecting to win, but it would limit me. And this was kind of a mental break. So think about something that is for you a mental break, a condition to satisfy, to allow you to draw. Don't use draw as a constant, but instead use it as a reward system. Because you, number one, you're gonna appreciate it more. And number two, I promise you, you're gonna reduce your consumption. And little by little, what I want you to do, please, please, please. And you know, I know it's a long shot. If you can get this out, jackpot, jackpot. You, the amount of money that you're gonna save and the amount of money that you're gonna be able to invest for your future, you're gonna be surprised. It's, it can flip your life. And here, I'm not just speaking about the health component. The financial component, it can literally flip your life. Okay. So what does that leave us? Every month, this is your gold number. This is the category that minus your needs, minus your wants. This is the amount of money that I want you to save every month today, no matter what, $800. You make $4,600. Mm -hmm. A lot of your expenses, you would be surprised. A ton of your expenses here are non-essentials. We've made the math. I look at all your expenses. I look at all your, at all your statements. You can do that. If you want to, financially and mathematically, you can do that. It's mathematically achievable. And here I'm assuming the payments that you're getting on the videographer and so on, you know, that's kind of what's helping you as well. Is that realistic or is that completely out of the way? So this is the math. It's pure just math. Just doing minimum payments. You're doing minimum payments. Because what I'm going to ask you to do then from my recommendation is what we're going to do called debt avalanche, which you pay the highest interest card first. If you're able to save that $800 a month to be debt free, except for your student loan, will take you 24 months. If I use that 800 yeah, and you strategically put it, and I'm going to show you at the end, I provide a document to you that will tell you exactly in which order you go. Okay. Which card you tackle. 20, 24 months. That's it. You would only have your student loan. That's 24000 that you're going to try and push it as much as you can until it's 0%. But at its core, you need to make the effort. I can't make the effort for you. Mathematically, it is achievable. You can get yourself out of this position. So what you can do, leverage your car. Leverage your car as an asset, as something that you can make money with. For example, if let's say you drive it, you make $40 a night, that's two hours. Two hours, sometimes you can make bank when it's like uh, peak times during weekends. Do Grubhub, do DoorDash, do uh, Uber Eats. Make that 800 target early on, no matter what. It's gonna take you time, but you have the best car for this. It's gonna cost you zero. Moving on, I want to highlight the complexity and the dynamic with paying down debt. While you're starting with 800, 
what you're going to find, uh, Corey, is that little by little, as you pay your debt, your needs is going to reduce because you're going to have less minimum payments and it's going to be easier and easier to pay those $800. And ultimately, I want you to pay more. The faster you pay, the better it is, okay? Mm -hmm. Today, you need to take the belt. Mm -hmm. So now, if we've put this together, Corey. Are you going to take action? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. Do you feel like you can? What is the barrier today that prevents you from being hyper-confident that you can do this? What, what is the blocker? Tackling another addiction. The, the jewel addiction? Mm-hmm. Does so so for the, the, the cocaine addiction, when you stopped it, you went from one hundred to zero. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that by going just lower is not the best route that you should try and completely stop it? Yeah. Oh, you think you, you should do that? Mm -hmm. But are you gonna be able to do that? That's the I thing. I don't know. I don't know. It's uh what about visualizing things? You know, people, sometimes the way they, they look at debt payment, they visualize, mm -hmm. they visualize things. You can create like a nice uh, kind of a jar or thermometer. And every time you have an impulse or something, put that money into that piggy bank or any things that you feel will allow you to give yourself a reward from taking action towards your addiction. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, if you go with the 250 less per month, you're going to be on rocket for 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 that saving it's going to take you even less i mean to me if you play the game right and you tackle this in a year and a half you can be out two years if the mat it's the mathematical option but as you gain momentum as you gain confidence in yourself as you you feel like you finally have a grab a grip back on your life and then at 35 this is what i want you to do okay i want you to start thinking the next step is to put an emergency fund together Okay. Okay. An emergency fund. And that is three to six months of your needs. For you, initial targets on this emergency fund is $10,000. Okay. There's, this is money that you put on the side that you don't touch except for extreme emergencies. And then you start thinking about investments, about your retirement, about and so on and so forth. You have the cards in hand. Okay. You're going to do this. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is very simple. I'm going to put a reminder in one month. I'm going to call you back. Mm -hmm. And we'll see if you actually have taken action in one month. And then I call you back in six months. Kay. Okay? And then I call you back in one year. You have three checks with me. In one year, you should have paid at least 50% of your credit, of your debt. Okay. And hopefully, by the time I call you in six months, you're done with Joel. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. You got this. Yeah. I know it's tough. I know it's tough, but... This could completely change your life. So, awesome. It's a pleasure uh, to have you with us today to share the story of Corey. We hope that you've got a little bit of insights into someone's real stories and that you can apply it in your situation. We invite you to check out our other contents, our other stories, and I also go into like other segments on best tricks to perfect the personal finance game. Corey, as always, thank you so much for your time. We'll see you guys next time. A bientôt. Hi, Roman. Um, I'm doing great. I am on track to be debt-free in four years. I actually consolidated my credit card debt into a personal loan, so I'm at 12.5% instead of 28.5. So I will be done paying that off in four years at $600 a month. I've cut down on jewels. I also have employed a Google Sheet spreadsheet that is a cash flow budgeting and tracking worksheet. So um, it uses an API to update my account balances and transactions in uh, real time. And so I can really keep an eye on and track and plan for the future.